What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be taking a look at the Bit Phoenix Cube 240mm. I hope you guys enjoy. I picked this cooler up off of Amazon for around $70, but I'm sure you could pick it up cheaper on sites like eBay or Newegg. The main thing that caught my eye here was the attractive price and the see-through water block. I thought that looked pretty cool. Taking a quick look at the box, it has some basic info and some basic imagery of the product. Opening it up, we see the manual sitting on top with everything else neatly packed in plastic bags. The contents were the manual, which was really informational and will definitely be useful for any new computer builder, the fans, an extra bottle of coolant, the mounting hardware, the PWM splitter and ARGB adapter cable, and of course, the all-in-one cooler itself. Taking a look at the fans, I'm not really liking the way they feel. They feel cheap and flimsy. But they do have anti-vibration pads, and they also have daisy chain cables. But for some reason, Bit Phoenix decided to have a proprietary connector for the fans, but a standard 3-pin ARGB connector for the water block, requiring an adapter and extra cables that could have been avoided. Anyways, the fans have hydraulic bearings that are PWM controlled, and spin up to 2000 RPM, pushing up to 60 CFM. They also have 8 ARGB LEDs, and are able to stop completely to eliminate noise. Oh, and apparently these fans are designed specifically for this radiator, so that'll be fun to test. The mounting hardware has hardware that can support the newest Intel LGA 1700 and AMD AM5 CPUs. It also has support for some older CPUs such as Intel LGA 1150X and AM400. It came with six plastic standoff risers, four mounting standoffs, four thumb nuts, the Intel pump bracket, the AMD pump bracket, nine radiator mounting screws, eight long fan screws, and there is also a small tube of Bit Phoenix TF10 Extreme Thermal Paste. But that is because the all-in-one cooler does not come with pre-applied thermal paste. It has a heat transfer ability of about 13.8 watts per meter Kelvin. The cables they provided feel great. There's an ARGB adapter for the fans and a PWM splitter. Oh, also, just a side note, this Intel backplate is the most premium Intel backplate I have ever felt. Anyways, the extra coolant they provided is pretty basic. Antifreeze up to negative 5 Celsius, has a main composition of water and propylene glycol, which I hope I pronounced that right, and the volume they provided is 100 milliliters. I'm assuming this is here for whenever you need to add extra coolant to the inevitable evaporation of the coolant that's already in the cooler, or if you want to flush through your cooler. At first for me. Taking a look at the cooler itself now, it looks amazing. Apart from the dust on it from the packaging, it's in great condition. The radiator looks amazing. No nicks or bends in any of the fins. That is also a first for me, because usually the brand new all-in-one coolers that I get always have at least one fin bent. The radiator has what I'm assuming is either a drain or fill port on it too. The tubing feels great. It has a black nylon weave, and the pump sits on both of them. This pump, well, it doesn't really say what kind of pump it is, but it's supposed to be an innovative design? I mean, BitPhoenix didn't really say what kind of pump it is, so I'm assuming they made it themselves. It's PWM controlled and has a lift of 1.8 meters. It also has an average running speed of about 5,500 RPM, but my test found it hitting peaks of 6,200 RPM. The water block looks amazing. I love the fact that it's see-through. I've always been a fan of seeing the coolant run through with all the bubbles and stuff. It has a standard 3-pin ARGB cable coming out of the side, and the cold plate is made of nickel-plated copper. This is supposed to make it so that it doesn't oxidize after a while. It also has a warning label on it, telling you to remove it before using. The fittings are very tough and hard to move. And the water block also has what I'm assuming is a drain or fill port on it. The cold plate has a central inlet design. It's essentially split so that the cool liquid entering the cooling fins is separated from the hot liquid leaving the cooling fins. All very nice to see. Before I install this cooler, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. A simple click or tap on a button will support me greatly, and you could always unsubscribe in the future if you change your mind. Anyways, let's get back to the video. Installing the cooler was a breeze. The pump brackets slide on, and the manual explained everything pretty well, which I was happy about because I was confused about these little plastic standoffs. They go below the metal ones, and it makes it so that the backplate on your motherboard doesn't move around when you mount the pump, so that was nice to see. I installed the fans on the radiator, and I'll be using the Bit Phoenix thermal paste for testing purposes. The cube will be tasked with cooling this 5700X in three different runs, a stock run, an auto overclock run, and a manual overclock run. 
all being done in a 3500X case with the tempered glass on. Starting up the computer, I was a bit disappointed when I saw that the RGB was only a small strip at the very bottom of the water block. I thought it was going to be ARGB all around. It still looks alright though. And the fans are a bit dim compared to the rest of the computer, but also still look alright. Now, this pump is barely audible. Like, you cannot hear this thing at all. It is super quiet. This is honestly the quietest pump that I've ever heard. The RGB pump and fans are all being controlled by the Commander Core XT, so having everything synced up is nice. Anyways, it's time for testing. The software I'm using is of course Synbench R23 for about an hour. The ambient temperatures is a warm 77 Fahrenheit, and the pump will be set at its 5500 RPM running speed. And here are the results. For the money, it's pretty good. I'm happy with it. It kept the CPU below 90 Celsius, and it did it all while being completely silent and looking pretty at the same time. If you're looking for a decent all-in-one cooler that doesn't break the bank, I think this one's definitely a go. I 100% recommend this. It's gonna stay in my collection. I love the way it looks, and I love the way that it performs, too. I'd say my only issues here are the dim LEDs, and the fans could have definitely used some work, but they did their job, and kept the radiator cooled. These fans really are designed for this radiator. Anyways, that'll have to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment down below what you guys thought about this cooler. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything from this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.